I mean, let's talk about the auto industry. It seems to me that America was built by the big auto companies. I don't want to overdo it, but what goes, what's good for General Motors, good for America. Sure. But mostly it was good for workers. All those men and women who had really solid jobs working for the auto companies. They had health insurance because the UAW and the Ruther brothers. Everything was working until when, when did it break? When did that sense of solid... Uh, advantage that the American auto industry held all those years die. Well, I'm not sure exactly when it happened, but I mean, I think a lot of things played into that, and, and obviously the legacy costs when, when we started competing with the foreign companies coming in here, when Toyota and Nissan and, and what Honda. What about legacy costs? Well, if you take a look at, for instance, a, a domestic car built by, you know, GM, Ford, or Chrysler, have probably $2,000 built into uh, what we refer to as legacy, legacy costs, which is health insurance and retirement for the retirees. Who are already uh, retired. Who are already retired. So, in other words, every car is carrying this big bag called yesterday's employee, Absolutely. whereas the new car, if, if Toyota comes in and opens up a plant in, in Kentucky, right, then they don't have any of those costs. Sure, and they're also more flexible. I mean, our plants that were built 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago in some cases, where Toyota and these guys are building bland, brand new plants, who, that's why CAFE is so important okay, to us. the thing that scares me is we've always counted on these union contracts to provide for a person's retirement and their health care in retirement. What happens when Chrysler sells their company to a Cerberus, to some kind of equity firm that doesn't have that paternal deal with people. It doesn't have that years and years and years of connection with families and just says, the heck with you guys. Well, I'm not sure they're ever going to do that. I mean, look, I think the reality... You don't think that, they're going to sell these companies? Well, I think they're selling them, but I don't think anybody walks away from them. I, I think the strength of the auto industry, the strength of the domestic auto industry is the family. I mean, these are all family-based businesses. So you're, My, you're confident that these corporations will stick to, and even if they're owned by new new people, that they will stick to their commitments. I think so, because I think that's the strength of the companies. I mean, if, you know, my family's a General Motor family. My father spent 32 years on a line it to Fisher Body. that way. Yeah, and I no, think, when you I go think to buy a car, you buy General Motors. I normally do, yeah. General Motors, Ford. Well, I happen to have a Chrysler. You see a guy now. driving a Benz around here, a Toyota. Does it bother people or not? It, used to it bother bothers people. some. It bothers some. I mean, it doesn't bother me because I think that's the market. Should we ask these okay. guys tomorrow what kind of car you got? Uh, that'd, be <laughs> interesting. that'd be interesting, <laughs> wouldn't it? Uh, I don't know. It could be tricky. It could be tricky, but you know, you get the you get the Democrats coming in complaining about cafe standards, and they're, they're all the ones driving the SUV, the gas yeah. guzzler. So there's a bit of irony there and, and some hypocrisy. Uh, but look, the domestic auto industry built the middle class if it didn't build America, that's for sure.